Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and today I'm at Tipinogos Caves in Utah. And as you can see, it's pretty cool in here. We're in a, one of the bigger rooms. Keep watching and I hope you enjoy this next video. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio. If you're interested in iOS development, then consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon down below, and you'll get notified when the new videos about iOS development come out. Okay, we're continuing with the itinerary app series. And in this video, we're going to work on data validation and indicate to the user that a field is required. We can do this by showing an icon in the text field, such as in the picture that you see here. In this video, you're going to learn how to add and show icons inside of text fields. Yes, there actually is a way, and the UI text field was built to support this. Okay, let's go into Bitbucket, and we're going to look at the boards, and this is where we're managing all of our tasks. So, Let's see, the last task we worked on was adding trips and getting the data to work. So we're adding data and we're showing it. And then the next thing we want to do is this task, which is add validation to the add trips pop up text field. Okay, now before we actually get into the project and start doing some work, I want to give you an overview of how we're going to be adding icons to the UI text field just so you get an idea of how it works. The UI text field actually has two UI views built into it that you can use to add other views or controls too. So this makes it really easy for us when we want to add, say, a UI image view. The text field has a left view and a right view. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an image to the right view, and we're going to show that when there's no data in the text field. Now these views are not showing by default, so we'll have to change another property to tell the UI text field to show the right view, where the icon will be. Okay, let's head into the project and write some code that checks the text field to make sure there's text in it, and if there isn't, we'll show the icon. Okay, we're in our project in Xcode, and the first thing I want to do before we start making changes and adding our validation icon to the UI text field is I want to save the changes from the previous video when we were saving data to our data store and refreshing the trips list to show the new trip that we just added. And as you can see in our project, there's a bunch of M's over here. And that just basically means that the file was modified since the last time I committed. So I want to commit these changes to Bitbucket. So when I start working on the next feature or the next task, if I make a mistake or something isn't working right, I can easily revert all my changes back to a last known good condition that the project was in. So I'm just going to hold down Command Option C to commit and make sure all my changes are checked off here. That looks good. Okay, and then I'm just going to write some kind of message and here it was saving new trips. Saving new trip data, that's fine. Okay, good, so let's look at the view controller where we're doing the actual saving. And let me just make some more space here. Now if we look here, make some space. Okay, here's where we're actually creating the new data or creating or saving the trip. So we need to do our validation before this line. So let's just do it right here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check if there's data in the text field. And if there isn't, then I'm going to show the icon. So I'm going to use the guard. And the condition here is check if trips text field dot text does not equal blank. If it does, then we're going to show the icon right here. So first, I want to guard that there is value in the text field. And then I can add a second condition with just a comma and maybe put that value into a variable. And call it new trip name equals like that. All right, and then I can just use this variable name down here. Because at this point, I know that there actually is a value and I can save it. But if there isn't, then I can use this place to add an icon that warns the user that, hey, there's some missing data. So what I'm going to do is create a UI image view, and then I'm going to assign a warning icon to that image view, and then I'm going to add that image view to the right view. So first things first, let's create our UI image view. And I'm going to define a rectangle the size of this image view. And I usually just go with the integers because it's simple numbers. Okay, it's not going to have a x and y position. 
and the width I'll just make 30 and the height let's take a look at something here okay now the text field you can see the height is 30 here so we can choose a UI image view with a height of 30 but it's going to extend the icon all the way up to the top and the bottom of the text field and I want it want it to have some border around it you know some margin some padding so I'm not going to quite make it 30. Instead, what I'll do is I'll make it 20. OK. And then we need to set an image. And I do have an image already in here. It's called the uh, a warning icon. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. So that's the image that we're going to have show. And then what I want to do is I want this image to scale, because it might be a little bit bigger than uh, 20 by 20 or 30 by 20. So I'm going to set a content mode here. And I just want it to scale uh, so it always maintains its, the correct shape. And it doesn't go beyond the, the margin of the UI image view. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to assign it to the right view of the text field. And there's our right view right there. Okay, so now we have our image inside the right view on the right side of our UI text field but it's still not going to show. So in order to make it show, I need to change its mode of the right view. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Right view mode right here. So with this, we have a few different options. We have always, never. By default, it's set to never. Uh, it doesn't show it, but we want to show it right now. So we're going to change it to always. And as you can see, there's some other options there, unless editing or while editing. And we're just going to always show it. And then once we show it, we, we want to do return. And that's what, this <laughs> that's what this error hit here has been telling us to do. Let's put a return in here. Because if we're showing the icon, then we don't want it to save, right? So we want it to skip over this other code here. OK, that should do it. But what will happen now? is if we show this right view mode and then we save it again the icon or the image view is just going to stay there so what we want to do is we just want to make sure that the right view mode is reset every time we come back in here so let's do that there we go okay let's try that and see how that works okay if we try to save it there we go we get our icon that shows up and it gives the user some indication that, hey, something's wrong. And hopefully it attracts their attention to this field. So there you go. We added an icon to the right view of this UI text field. And we're making it show by changing, changing its mode to always. Now, of course, there's other things that you can do. This is just one way to let the user know that there's something wrong or there's something required. And we're not going to close this pop-up until you correct it. Okay, good. Now we're using an image to hint to the user that some data is required here, but this isn't your only option. And it may not even be the best option for your app. You have choices, and we're going to look at some of these choices that you can use. So for now, we're just going to comment out this code, and I'll show you some alternatives here. One alternative is maybe you can show a different background color. We could say text field, background color, equals and then I'm going to pick a color like uh, we'll say color literal and then I'm going to change this I'm going to click on other and then we'll go with a like a lighter red color something like that so now if we run it we can try to add something try to save it and then it turns red so again you know depending on your app this might work better for you Another option is maybe you don't want it to be so obvious. You want to be a little bit more subtle. So what we're going to do is we're going to change just the border width and the border color. And we do that through the layer property. And maybe we make it red. And whenever you go through the layer property, you're in the area of core graphics. So right now, this UI color is in the framework of the UI kit. 
So we have to convert it to core graphics color because it's a core graphics property. And then you won't see the border until we actually give it a width. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. There you go. So it gives it a uh, red border. Now notice here, let's take a look at this again. The corners of the text field are rounded, but when we go to save it, you notice the border is, is squared. So we'll have to add some kind of like corner radius to it too. And I'm not quite sure what the default is. Maybe it's like a five. Yeah, that looks better. So these are just some different options that I wanted to share with you. Another option that we can try too, the placeholder text says trip name. Maybe we can change that to say trip name required or something like that. So we can say trip text field, placeholder text, like that. Yeah, so it says trip name, and I try to save, and then it says trip name required. So I just wanted to share some other options with you to give you some ideas of things you can do in your app to help the user know what's missing and, and what they need. Okay, so to wrap up, just remember that a UI text field has a right view and a left view, and that you can put other controls or other views or images inside of those views. And when you're ready to show them, you just change their mode. You can change it to always, and whatever is in that view will become visible to the user. All right, guys, if you like this video, consider sharing it with the community. And remember to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so you get notified when new videos come out or the next video in this series comes out. If you'd like to help out, you can provide a translation for just the title and the description in your native language. So that way, developers who speak your language or live in your country can find this video more easily. All right, thanks guys.